Jeez, should have just done a first take. Oh, fun video. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the video. Yeah. Thanks for watching Be Better Golf, Mike. A lot of people, when they're getting, kind of see it like once you've broken 80. Yeah. It always seems like you're going pretty good in a round, and especially if you're about to like shoot your personal best or something. Right. All of a sudden, you'll come into a situation where it seems like I've never practiced this, or it's so weird. And um, we've set up three different shots to kind of show that these could be like round destroyers. It could go all the way, instead of a bogey, you could make like a, a five or a six or more. What is the key when it comes to awkward stance, weird shots around the green? Well, when I was playing for a living, we used to, I used to spend at least a day a week where all I would do was go out and try really weird situations. Because you can, you can guarantee these guys on TV, when you see these shots that they call them miracle shots, they aren't miracle shots. They're, they're difficult, but they've practiced them and they know how to set up to them to make them as easy as they can possibly be. When I watch amateurs like this shot we're gonna hit here, they have no idea how to set up, what they're trying to do, and what their instincts tell them to do, and what they really should be doing aren't even close to the same. Okay. So if you know what you're doing and you practice it a little bit, then you're gonna be able to pull it off. And uh, like Brennan was saying, what happens is, whenever you play a round of golf, it seems, and you have a chance to either do really well or whatever, whatever shot you're the weakest at, all of a sudden seems to show up. It's the weirdest thing. I mean, I've done it my whole career, tour schools and all that. All of a sudden, you're on the 17th hole and you're in a good situation and you're gonna make the cut or you're gonna get your card or you're gonna win the club championship or you're gonna shoot your personal. And all of a sudden, you're in a situation, you're going, I'm not really sure how to do this. And you try something that doesn't work and you make a double or a triple and you're going, all day long I played and then one situation blows the whole day up. Yeah. So, and this is one of them that can. So we, we're here in two shots on this par four on a down slope to kind of a short pin. So right. what I see a lot of times when it turns into a, like a train wreck is this shot either gets flubbed or it gets screaming thinned right. over the green. So this shot really is not that difficult, especially to get it somewhere on the green within 10, 15, 20 feet of that hole if you know what you're doing. Now, uh, again, instincts and how most people go with this, and even how I was taught initially how to set up, isn't how you set up. And I didn't learn that until I was out on tour and I'd all of a sudden see guys that were really good players. Yeah. And they'd have the shot. So what I'd do is I'd watch what they were gonna do because I knew what I would try to do. And then I'd look at them and I'd watch how they'd set up and I'm going, what the heck's he doing? And so as soon as the round was over, I'd go recreate the shot and set up the way they were and try it. And I'd go, oh my goodness. I mean, no wonder they can do it. It's a lot easier. Yeah. Anytime you have a downhill, anytime you have any uneven lies, okay, you gotta do a couple of things. One, if this is a flat lie and here's your upper body in a normal flat lie, wherever the ground goes, you've got to make your upper body relative to the ground the same as it would be on a flat lie. Yeah. That makes it so that the circle of your swing works the same. So that's the first thing. So I've got a downhill lie here, severe downhill. I'm going to have to get my upper body really tilted this way. Now what most people do is they lean back into the hill. Uh, okay. And so if I get on this lie and I lean this way at all, all of a sudden now my club keeps wanting to hit way back here. Right. And I see people do that all the time. They make a practice swing and the club hits here. And then they move into the ball. I go, whoa, 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 wait a minute, what are you doing? And they go, well, I'm not gonna hit there. Well, that's when you hit it bad because that's where your club wants to hit. So the first thing is I make sure that I get my shoulders relative to this ground the same as would be on a flat light. So on this, I'm gonna really have to tilt this way. Now, the other thing that's critical, if I take my normal stance, you see where my knee is? Let me come over here and check out this down the line. Okay, yeah, I see where your knee is. Okay, so now, because this foot's so much higher, if I exaggerate this, see, all of a sudden this knee's in the way. And the key in all these un uneven, funny shots is to create room for your arms to swing so you can hit the shot. So I, I even had people tell me to set up with an open stance and try to chase it down the hill. Uh-uh. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm tilted here. Now I'm going to take this foot and I'm going to start dropping this foot back until this knee gets behind this one. So there's room here for my arms to swing. See, now I've got a free path for my arms to swing. My shoulders are tilted. Now I watch where the club automatically hits the ground, 
And then I just set into the ball, just swing and drop on the ball. Oh, really good. And I mean, that's three, four feet. So I want to talk about expectations. So you obviously three or four feet wouldn't be an expectation from here. What do, how can expectations help or hurt you in these weird situations around the green? Well, when you get it in a bad situation or a tough shot, right? even good players. Now, if I'm, if I'm sitting right here and I have this shot and the pin's right here where I've got very little green in front, very little green behind, and I have to hit it absolutely perfect. Yeah. Okay, if I haven't tried this shot a lot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, you know, I don't think I'm gonna try that one. I can get it over here, but where can I hit it where I can get it on the green? Because Scott, if you understand tour players, the best bunker player, for instance, last year on tour, his average from out of the green, or from out of the bunker to on the green and in the hole was 2.75 shots. So what that means is, if you're in the bunker, or you've got one of these shots, and you get it on the green and you two putt, you're within a quarter of a percentage point of the best guy in the world with this on average. Right, now, right. that's not what's happening when they win a tournament. When they win a tournament, they're getting this up and down almost all the time. That's why they're winning. But on average over the year. So your goal when you get in these situations is to get it from this situation somewhere on the green where you can two putt. Can I borrow your club for a second, Mike? I just want to see. So set up to this as if you were holding a club, just real, real quickly. Okay, so I just want to. So we're saying this, here's parallel with the slope and here's parallel with your shoulders. Yeah. See that, guys? And then if you act like the, the hole's over here. So act like the, I'm sorry, look, act like the hole's over there. It's like you have an uphill lie, so turn around the other way. Oh, so if I'm gonna go this way, now I'm gonna go this way. Now now the hill's here and your shoulders are there, same thing, parallel. Yeah. So you get in real bad trouble, you're saying, when, when you come with just like your driving range set up to, to this You're here. dead. Because now these are here and the slope's here, so that's crossed up. It isn't gonna work. Okay. <laughs> you can't put the ball far enough back in your stance to not hit it fat. All right, I'll try this one, Mike. <laughs> So expectations is just putting from somewhere. So I'm here, I'm here. Get that out of yeah, the way, you go. don't forget that. And this is probably the biggest key, shoulders okay. and that out of the way. Now, you just let the club swing and let it draw. Okay. Right, that was perfect. So now you just set in and go ahead and do the same thing. Okay, so let the club swing, let it drop. That's pretty good. That's okay, yeah. but what does this do? When you're, when you're doing this, it brings up a question. How does this affect how much swing you have to put into it. Well, again, like I was expecting, because usually on these downhill ones, they come out hot. But that came out way softer, more like a regular chip. Yeah, well, that was just because of the way you had the club face set. And this oh. another one of these deals is, once you know how to hit this shot, okay, now you've got to set, and you've got to practice it a few times to find out, you know, when you hit it well, what is what is exactly what it's going to do? How low does it come out? Yeah, it's interesting, because I didn't have to I thought it had to be real soft with it because it was going to come out screaming, but I can actually hit this like a, no, no, like a chip shot. Yeah. What should I do with the face? Well, okay. Because I want to hit it high. So well, if you want to hit it higher, then you want to open the face a little bit. Uh -huh. But now you're going to have to swing just a little harder. Okay. Drop your leg out of the way. There you go. There you go. Gotcha. So now you just got to make, because the face is open, you just got to make a little more swing. Oh, I see. Just like that. All right. I mean, now that's going to be 10 feet. Okay, so we've we've avoided the uh, the huge number. Let's go to our, our situation number two. All right, Mike, we're at situation number two as far as curing your round killers, making your round killers just speed bumps rather than giant ditches where you uh, crash your car and ruin it. Describe this shot for us. Well, now you've hit in the bunker. The ball rolled up against the lip. It didn't go back into the bunker. Now you got a steep lip. The ball's way below your feet. You know, we've got the flag right here. You're trying to get out of this situation. You've got to make sure that, one, in these shots that you're stable. Because the biggest thing on these shots, these little shots, people tend to fall off balance, so they miss hit it. So if I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, well, here's one way I could do it. I could really bend down like this, but now my knees are in my way. It's hard to get out of my way. I'm bent over a lot. There's a lot of angle in my hips. I'm going, okay, I could maybe pull this off, but there's a lot of things that could go wrong. And when you bend over that much, Mike, if you can, I don't think you can really make much of a turn from there, huh? Well, you can't make any turn. No. And you're kind of stuck. And the other thing is, you're not used to hitting a ball bent over this much. 
and what people will do is they'll they'll lose their balance and then they miss hit the shot so what would be the other option okay well here's what most people don't think about so if I were to kneel down like this all of a sudden now see I'm basically set up like I normally set up now I'm I'm out of the way I'm set up it's easy for me to swing I'm really stable and now all I've got to do is hit and throw the sand and the oh, ball's yeah. out I mean now so I turned a real tough setup situation into something that's really pretty simple yeah because I'm stable there's room to swing the club fits the, the arc of the of the sand and all I got to do is just hit and throw the sand like I would on a normal shot so most people would never try this well I used to go out and try it all the time okay so you get in here okay we'll give you a lie here all right So like I say, if you tried to bend down to hit that, right. see, you're, you're going, see how much you're, you're, everything's in the way, you're tilted. Yeah. Okay. And, and then it's really just becomes risk. Well, yeah, it, it right. gets really difficult. So, so now, you drop that foot and you kneel down. Oh yeah, now, now I'm more like on my... And how much more posture. comfortable do you now feel? There you go. There you go. Good right there. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Now all you gotta do is just yeah, you do, you do your normal bunker shot. Okay. So I just thump it about yeah, just, a little bit behind the ball and yeah. splash the sand you were saying. Yeah, just throw the sand out. Oh, it's a great shot. And now, might go in. No. No, it almost did out. Okay, so folks, you, you, you have to have seen these and then you have to go out and practice them a little bit. When I would get these funny lies, severe lies, I'd have to learn how the face affects it, where I need to set up, and how to get set up so I can hit them. And then all of a sudden, these lies are not difficult. Yeah. I mean, they're actually pretty easy, except they're really difficult the way most people try to pull them off. And so it turns into so a big number. We're not as talented as tour players. We don't have their hands and stuff. But you're saying, even if you had like amazing hands, this it would be it would go from a level like six difficulty to a level 10 of difficulty if you're setting up incorrectly. No question. Okay, gotcha. I mean, it's not the easiest shot in the world, but the way and what tour players will do to get set in there, and remember the key is get stable, create room for your arms to swing. Yeah. So you gotta get your body out of the way. And most people in these situations set up incorrectly, their body's in their way, and then they try to figure out how to get the club to the ball. Okay. So the degree of difficulty goes from a six to a 10. Right, gotcha. All right, let's move to our next round breaker situation. Okay, today we're talking about those weird situations that always seem to pop up when you have something good going that could ruin your round, or you could do something smart if you've practiced it and just have it be like a little speed bump along the road of your good round. Let's describe this lie here, Mike. So we have maybe uh, 25 yards to the green, but you have no grass and it's almost kind of muddy under the ball. Yeah, so now, now we're going, okay, where, where most people end up screwing up with this one is it, you either blade it and it's gone into the bunker or the lake, or you fluff it and you barely get it out, and if there's a bunker or something in the way. So you want to be able to hit it solid first. I mean, so the first thing is what shot do I have the best chance of catching it solid with? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make change my setup a little. I'm going to make sure that I'm not tilted back again, because then you hit the ground way too early. Uh, yeah. So. When I set up more level, the other thing it does is it almost straightens your right arm out to the point where your right arm now becomes kind of the pendulum of your swing. A lot of people go, well, you know what's interesting? When I chip with just my right arm, I'm really good. And when I put my left hand in, I struggle. Yeah. Okay, well, the question would be then why? Well, when you chip with just your right arm, what happens is you let the weight of the club, your right arm gets fairly straight. So the, the arc of your swing stays the same. All of a sudden you put your left hand on, your shoulders tilt, your right arm bends, and then as you come into the ball, your right arm wants to straighten and it hits behind it. So they get over tilted to the right side when they Over tilted, the yeah. too much bend in their right arm. Right. So I do a couple of things. One, I let the club be a little more in the palm of my hands because I don't want any up and down. I don't need this. Mm -hmm. If my wrists are going to do anything, they go back and forth. So it's not very shallow. There, there's, it's not really steep. Okay. 
and the end. So then I get set up on my left side, my right arm high. Now all I'm going to do is swing really shallow, and I'm going to get the club face. I'm almost going to hood the face a little bit. It's interesting when people talk about use the bounce. There are some shots you want to use the bounce, mm -hmm. which helps with the ground, but the reality is you hit the ball in the face. I've never seen anybody hit the ball on the bounce. No. Okay, so bounce helps the club not dig, but the face has to hit the ball. So in this situation, I'm actually going to have the face a little closed. I'm going to be really shallow, get my right arm long. I'm going to try to just sweep it off that lie. So now I'm going to catch the ball first. Right. Okay, so how I've set up, a little tilted, right arm a little straight, club a little in the palm of my hand, so when I swing back and forth, all of a sudden now, there's no up and down. The up and down is what tends to put the leading edge into the ground. Okay. Yeah, because usually if I'm on a, a real bare lie like this, your instinct is to want to hit ball first, and you don't want to fat it, so you end up getting super steep. That, that's right. It's, so, you, but you're you're saying actually you'll have more margin for error on on a shallow. No question. Okay. Because you're shallower, you're not as steep. You're not going to dig the leading edge. Your weight's set on your left side. All right. So checkpoints here, Mike. I'm weight's a, a little more on my left side. Take a couple of right arm swings to kind of feel how my posture would be. And then uh, you like either like the hands high with the toe down a little bit. Exactly. And then a little shut. That's right. And I just go ahead and just sweep it off the lie. There's just virtually no, no, there you go. That's perfect. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, so. Not the way I would have played it. Well, no, and most yeah. people won't. And I used to practice off even really severe, really hard stuff like this. Yeah, that'll you happen know. sometimes. Well, yeah, you yeah. get it on a really hard pack stuff. And if I would go up and down, the club would bounce, I'd hit it thin. When I got more shallow and less hands up and down, and I used my right arm as my lever system, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I could make the bottom work all the time. So t talk about, Mike, when, when people say use the bounce, and when it starts to get to be like a, a hard pack lie or, or a certain type of lies, the bounce then gets scary to me because it'll skip off the bounce and then you'll blade it. Okay. So let's talk, talk about assessing lies and knowing when, okay, you can use the bounce here, but in this situation, that's when I would go hands high toe down. Okay. Let's, if, if we were to go, if we went right back here. Yeah. Okay, so now we're on, I mean, this is, is <laughs> this is a road, basically, that you wouldn't get a drop off. Now, if I'm going to use the bounce here, here's what has to happen. When I open the club face, when I'm going to use the bounce, mm -hmm. I'm, on this, I'm going to get it up on the toe, okay, because here's why. If it sits up on the toe, when the club hits the ground, here's what's going to happen. is the toe hits the ground, it slows the toe down, it speeds the heel up, engages the bounce, and the club slides. Okay, so when I'm going to, if I'm going to try to lob this a little bit off this tight lie, yeah. I'm going to get the club up so the toe's going to hit. So what happens is as the toe catches, mm -hmm. what does, it slows the toe down, it speeds the heel up, engages the bounce, and the club slides right through the ball. Uh, okay. If I try to do it this way, put my hands low and use the heel, when this hits, nothing good is going to happen if you hit behind the ball. It's either going to stop the club and you chunk it, or the heel stops and the toe speeds up and you hit it too far. Right. Or you skip off the ground. Or you and skip blade. off the ground right into it. This is going to let the club hit, engage the bounce, and let the club slide. So it hits, opens the face, and it slides. So all of a sudden now you've got this safety factor of quite a bit of room where I can even hit behind it. And I still hit a really good shot. Oh, yeah, really good. And that had a lot of spin on it. And I hit, the ball was sitting right here, and I hit clear back here. Okay. Now, if I would have hit here with the with the heel down, hitting here with the ball there would not have turned out good. Okay. There you go. All right, so I found myself on the road, and I'm trying to remember that video I made with Mike two years ago when he was telling me about this situation. <laughs> I knew it would pop up at some point. Yeah, so normally I'd be like this, and. Listen. See, now, if right. the way you just set up there and the way right. you use the club, 
if you hit it absolutely perfect, we're fine. But if you miss hit yeah. it at all, it's t it's a disaster. Not only that, but with with it like that, I would have to take a big swing, and then my margin of error goes real okay. real small. Okay, so you're on your left side. Your hands mm -hmm. are a little high. Uh, rules question here. Okay. Would I be able to pick a few pebbles out of the way, or did I just break the rules? No, you can pick some pebbles if they're not. You just can't like make a canyon for yourself. Well, yeah, if they, if they're not embedded in the ground. So that one is okay. Yeah, so you're you're dead on that one. But so, okay. So now set up, hands a little higher. Make a practice swing. If you want to always yep. make practice swings, open the face a little more. Get your hands a little higher so it's on yep. the toe. Now just make a swing and let it hit the ground and feel how the club, feel how the club just slides on the ground. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then set up. And do the same thing. Let the toe hip and just go. Oh, oh perfect. Oh my God. That was perfect. All right. That was perfect. Yeah, that was good. Now. Again, how you set up, how you use the club makes these shots go from being extremely difficult to being still a little difficult, but not near as hard as people make them, just by how you set up. And when I watch amateurs and pro-ams, and I see them get in situations, and I see them get set up and they make a practice swing, I'm going, oh, this has got no chance. I mean, if yeah. I try to do what he's trying to do, my chances of pulling it off go from six or eight out of ten to one out of ten yeah if you go on a wednesday to a tour event you always see the the pros standing with each other and the nudge the other guy and yeah. like check this out <laughs> well, <laughs> what he's about to try well yeah i yeah. mean so again on these uneven lies and these difficult shots you want to get your body set up where there's room for your arms to swing where you're stable and then you want to you want to use the club in a manner where if you miss hit it a little bit the club becomes your friend and there's room for air Okay, so checkpoints, because people won't necessarily have a, the, the three shots that we have, but they will get into weird situations. So your key is, uh, your key is what? Like if I was to put it in bullet points, like give yourself room to swing, posture, what, what are the three keys to weird shots? The first here? thing is check the lie, figure out what the club's got to do. And that determines how you're going to set the club up and how, what kind of hands you're going to use, what kind of okay. hand action. Mm -hmm. Two, it's make sure your setup is such that yeah that you've got room for your arms to swing and you're stable and nothing has to get out of the way so they're not adding variables to it yeah you're not changing your swing plane because of the way you're this right and then the third right. thing is make some practice swings and watch how your clubs interacting with the ground and then once you get it to interact with the ground correctly then you set up into the ball and go ahead and duplicate what you just did see most people make practice swings that have no relevance to what they're going to try to do with the ball. They're really? standing right next to the ball. They stand here, they make a swing, and they go, well, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. And then they set up into the ball. I go, well, oh, time out. Yeah. You just made two practice swings that had no relevance. Yeah. What are you going to do now? Well, I'm going to change it. No, that's when you hit terrible shots. Right. So the practice swings that tour players make, they get set up right next to the ball. They make practice swings until they get the swing all right, that's yeah, exactly that's what I want. Really then they set into it and they just duplicate the circle or the practice one. Thanks for watching, guys. Click the subscribe button and click the bell so that you get notified whenever I post new videos or if I go live. Mike has an amazing website that we didn't talk about today, but we will in the future called MalaskaGolf.com. And Be Better Golfers get a special discount using the promo code on signing up for Mike's website. It's really, really it's one of the best golf membership sites on the internet and uh, it's always, always growing. It's uh, some of these other membership sites, they made content like three years ago and then it's like a zombie site. This is like a constantly evolving, like rich community that people are really, that go from Be Better Golf into MalaskaGolf.com are really liking. So check that out with promo code and also subscribe to Mike's channel on YouTube, Malaska Golf. Thanks Mike. Good job.